Jews, we're known for some great things. Monotheism, theoretical physics, bagels, but not typically, or at least not stereotypically for athletic prowess, which is why it might shock you to learn that there are in fact some amazing Jewish baseball players. That's right, some of the chosen people chose ball caps over kippahs, turf over tefillin, triple plays over Talmud. Here are the top 10 greatest Jewish baseball players of all time. Hi, I'm Rosenberg. And I'm Goldlist. And we're the creators of The Ninth, new CBC comedy show on GEM, coming out this spring. Catch it. We're also Jewish. Where is so your Judaism? Yeah. Judaism, yeah. where are you? And today we're gonna combine two of our favorite pastimes, baseball and Judaism, to bring you the top 10 players in the tribe. Uh, not that tribe, this tribe, the Chaim. So to kick off the Simcha, let's get to number 10. Kevin Euclid. Kevin Euclid, AKA Uke, once held baseball's record for most consecutive airless games at first base. He's won the Gold Glove Award, the Hank Aaron Award. He's a three-time All-Star, two-time World Series champion, and has been inducted into the Red Sox Hall of Fame. Uke managed to accomplish all this despite growing up a fat kid. Probably because his bubby kept saying, ED, you're skin and bones. His weight meant that Uke wasn't the only nickname he ever earned. Coming up, he was often underestimated and bullied, even by his coaches. His high school coach used to call him Roly Poly. His college coach called him Pudgy. And general manager Billy Bean, that's right, Billy Bean from Moneyball, referred to him by the very clever moniker, Fat Kid. Bean would go on to give Euclid a much more complimentary nickname in his best-selling book, Moneyball. There, he called him, quote, the Greek god of walks. But this more complimentary name was only half right. As you might have gathered from the fact that he's on this list, Kevin Euclid is Jewish, not Greek. So, uh, Kevin Euclid. Yeah. Luke. I think the biggest thing that I notice about that is the uh, consecutive games without an error. And I think that probably comes from the idea of you don't want to feel that Jewish guilt of letting your team down. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Mm -hmm. the, that, that guilt. Yeah. If you make a mistake, you got to live with that. Ma, I hit two home runs. Doesn't matter. You, error, you made a fielding made error. A fielding error. Yeah. yeah. Your brother, you know, he didn't make any errors. Yeah, he's today. a doctor. He's a doctor, a specialist. Which brings us to number nine, Ian Kinsler. Ian Kinsler is a four-time All-Star, a World Series champion, a two-time member of the 3030 Club, a three-time member of the 2020 Club, and a two-time recipient of the Gold Glove Award. He's also been awarded the Fielding Bible Award, hit for the cycle in a game in 2009, and was featured on the 2009 Sports News list of the 50 greatest current baseball players. Like you, Kinsler is also an underdog who defied the odds. The five-tool player was drafted in the 17th round of college. Plus, he has asthma. Ha! Uh, fun story. Now entering his 14th season in the major, Kinsler is 37 years old. He recently told reporters that while he doesn't feel old, his Alexa disagrees. He claims his kids asked Alexa how old he is, and it said, Ian Kinsler is 36 years old. He's 10 years older than the average Padres player. Ouch. F you, Alexa. So yeah, I mean, uh, Kinsler, hell of a ball player, mm -hmm. has asthma. Yeah. I don't have asthma. You have diabetes. I do have diabetes. It's worse than asthma. I'd take asthma over diabetes any day. You think uh, asthma would be bad for an athlete, you know? But yeah, you got over it. But he managed. Well, who are we kidding? Baseball is not the most athletic of sports. I know. Plus, we probably got the asthma from the vaccines that he got as a kid. Everybody knows that vaccines cause asthma. Mike's an anti-vaxxer. I am not, not. an anti-vaxxer. I am not. He's also a flat earther. Uh, eh, I think the jury's still out on whether the earth is really round, okay? Yeah. The jury's still a little bit out. Okay. All right. Which brings us to number eight, Sid Gordon. Brooklyn-born Sidney Gordon played in the major leagues from 1941 to 1955, except for two seasons he missed, serving in the Coast Guard during World War II. That's right, he protected us from Nazis. Some credit this as the reason he never made it to the Hall of Fame, but Sid did get a couple of consolation prizes. Being inducted into the International Jewish Sports Hall of Fame and the National Jewish Sports Hall of Fame. Gordon was a versatile player, playing third base, first base, and as an outfielder. He was a two-time All-Star, but even as a top player and a military veteran, he faced his share of anti-Semitism. One day, the Cardinals bench apparently hurled anti-Semitic remarks at him, which he ignored. At 57 years old, Gordon passed away after a heart attack while he was playing softball in Central Park. Kind of a great way to go. Sid is a pretty Jewish sounding name. Super Jewish. Um, Gordon, less so. Yeah, I actually read that Gordon was probably a bastardization of Gdansk, 
or some other Eastern European town they changed his name to when he came to America, where his grandfather did. Mm. Mm -hmm. Catch it. Catch it. Which brings us to number seven on the list, Harry Danning. Harry the Horse was a four-time All-Star for the New York Giants, earning a reputation as one of the best defensive catchers in baseball, while hitting over 303 times. He was a member of the National League All-Star team for four years in a row, twice placing the top 10 in MVP voting. But why did they call him the horse, you ask? It's after a Damon Runyon character. Get your mind out of the gutter. Also, he had a huge c Harry's brother, Ike Danning, was also an MLB player playing for the St. Louis Browns in 1928, but apparently he wasn't as good as his brother because he didn't make this list. His mother must be so disappointed. After baseball, Harry served in the military and became a minor league coach. And he lived a long life, passing away at the age of 93. What can you say about Harry Danning that hasn't just been said in yeah. this <laughs> long bio? Yeah, I mean, Harry Danning is, uh, every Jewish kid grows up knowing about Harry Danning, his poster's on our wall. His name is in the Torah. <laughs> Harry the Horse. Harry I had, a, the horse. I had a, a Harry the Horse poster. Yeah, I had two. Which brings us all the way to number six, our favorite on the list, Sean, Sean Green. Green. Growing up, Green felt little connection to Judaism and was not even bar mitzvah. But that all changed when he cracked the big leagues as a sweet swinging outfielder for the Blue Jays. Green began embracing his religion while developing a bond with that city's vibrant Jewish community often getting invited to local simchas. Traded to the Dodgers in 1999, he continued to reconnect with his Jewish roots in Los Angeles. When he famously took the day off for Yom Kippur, he evoked memories of Sandy Koufax decades earlier. With more than 300 homers and 1,000 RBIs in his standout career, Green ranks as one of the most prolific Jewish sluggers of all time. Now, what I really like about Sean Green is that he has played baseball for the Mets, the Blue Jays, and the Dodgers, which means he's lived in New York, Toronto, and Los Angeles, meaning he's had smoked meat sandwiches at Katz's, Center Street Deli, and Cantor's. I'm very curious, Sean Green, where is the best smoked meat sandwich? Too bad he didn't play for the Expos. Then we'd know whether Schwartz is making the list. Mm -hmm. uh, I doubt it. I would put Panzers above Katz's. Panzers above Katz's? Yeah. Out of your fucking mind. Panzers is a machine sliced place. Delicious, don't get me wrong, but we're talking hand sliced smoked meat. It's not how you slice it, it's what you're slicing. Mm, it's a little bit of both. Mm -mm. Sean Green, let us know. We'd love to get hear at you. us. Which brings us all the way to number five Rod Carew. Okay, maybe he's not technically a Jew, but he did marry one. Carew received death threats when he announced his plans to marry a Jewish woman, but went through with the ceremony. He went on to observe Jewish customs, including raising his kids in the Jewish faith. One of the best pure hitters the game has ever known, Carew retired with 3,053 hits and a 328 batting average. And in 1991, he was inducted into Cooperstown Hall of Fame. He wore a high, do you know that? Uh, yeah, I've looked at a lot of close-ups of Rod Carew, so I know that, yeah. It's amazing. I just like the big hairy chest and the high. No, if my uncle. that thing flapping around, yeah. it's something. It really looks like my uncle. He also, um, Adam Sandler has that great line in the Hanukkah song about him. Let's run a clip of Adam Sandler singing the Hanukkah song. O.J. Samson, not a two, <laughs> but guess who is Hall of Famer Rod Guru? Which brings us to number four, Lou Boudreau. The booty. The booty. Lou Boudreau had a number of nicknames. The Good Kid, Handsome Lou, and Old Shufflefoot. His accomplishments include seven all-star appearances, a World Series title as player manager, a batting title, and the 1948 MVP. To this day, he still holds the MLB record for hitting the most consecutive doubles in a game at four. A baseball lifer he continued to manage after his playing career ended, after which he joined the Cubs broadcasting team. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1970. Uh, another fun fact about Lou Boudreau is he invented the infield shift. Mm -hmm. Jews, always inventing things. The car, for example. No, that was <laughs> invented air, by an anti-Semite. The airplane? The Wright brothers, Wrightenstein. Yeah. Um, so the infield shift is where you shift in the infield. Great description. <laughs> Let's run a clip of uh, the 1978 Toronto Blue Jays infield shifting on a Bo Jackson grounder to middle infield. Yeah, let's run on that. <laughs> also, let's run on someone pressing the shift button on a keyboard. <laughs> one or the other, pick one of those clips and then we're gonna comment. 
Oh, ooh, nice shift. The infield shift has revolu revolutionized the game. Revolutionized. I mean, baseball doesn't get revolutionized very often, so you can say it revolutionized the game. It's been revolutionized exactly three times. One, when they allowed the curveball. Two, when robots took over in the late 80s. And three, when the Philadelphia Phillies foolishly signed Bryce Harper to a $9 billion contract for the next 104 years. Bunch of idiots, you're gonna regret that soon. He's Fuck you, Bryce Harper. He's a robot though, so it's okay. Which brings us to number three, Al Rosen. Al Rosen, nicknamed Flip. And the Hebrew Hammer, one of several Hebrew Hammers on this list, Al Rosen was a World Series champion and a four-time All-Star. He was named the American League MVP in 1953, and the stats don't lie, people. That year, he had a 336 batting average and a 422 on on-base percentage with 43 home runs. A notable tough Jew, Rosen was an amateur boxer who broke his nose 13 times, that's good luck, during his baseball career. He was known to confront anti-Semitic taunts from the fans and opposing players. Why would you ever want to taunt an amateur boxer? Rosen twice led the league in home runs before retiring at 32 due to a bad back and leg injuries. He would eventually come back to baseball working as an executive, but immediately after his retirement, he became a stockbroker, a career he pursued for the next 22 years. Great start to his last name though, I'd say. Wouldn't you say, Mike? Rosen? Yeah. Throw a Berg on there and you're hitting a home run. Yeah. Catch it. I don't love that he became a stockbroker afterward. It's a little anti-Semitic. Yeah. 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 Would have liked him to stick to boxing. Yeah. During his career, they're probably like, Jewish baseball player, shouldn't you be a, a stockbroker? And he's like, fuck you. Actually, like, stockbroker is a good idea. Come I mean, to it's think not a bad it, idea. Baseball's not going to last yeah, forever. Yeah, it's not going to last forever. Coming in at number two, we have Hank Greenberg. Hank Greenberg was the original bearer of the nickname, the Hebrew Hammer. He was also called Hammer and Hank and Hank is Pankus. A five-time All-Star, two-time World Series champion, and two-time American League MVP, Hank Greenberg is one of the all-time great sluggers and may just be the best first baseman of all time. Greenberg was the first Jewish superstar in American team sports. He was the first to refuse to play on Yom Kippur. He was one of the few opposing players to publicly welcome Jackie Robinson when he broke the color barrier. And Hank Greenberg served in World War II from 1941 to 1945. Fun fact, when he joined the military, Hank Greenberg's salary was cut from $55,000 a year to 21 bucks a month. In today's dollars, that's an annual salary drop from a million dollars to less than five grand. It's not a lot of money for playing baseball. Yeah, so everyone who's like, eh, he probably just played baseball for the money because he's Jewish, go fuck yourself, you anti-Semite. I don't think there's too many people saying that. I just said it. <laughs> I guess. Someone else might say it. Yeah, no, it's true. If you if you said it and think it, there's got, what's the rules of the internet? If you think it and say it, there's a million other people thinking it and saying it. That's right. Another great thing about Hank Greenberg is he, he served in World War II, which means he won a World Series, he won two World Series, and he killed Nazis. That's mm -hmm. a pretty good life. Yeah. Okay, and that brings us all the way to number one. Echad mi odea, echad ani odea, Sandy Koufax. Sandy Koufax is indisputably the greatest Jewish baseball player of all time. He pitched 12 seasons for the Dodgers, both in Brooklyn and LA. And despite his premature retirement due to arthritis at the age of 30, he accomplished more than any ball player could ever hope for. The seven-time All-Star pitched four no-hitters in one perfect game, was named National League MVP, and led his Dodgers to the World Series championship four times. The Dodgers retired his number, 32, and at just 36 years old, he became the youngest player ever to be elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Koufax is probably best known today for the fact that he sat out game one of the 1965 World Series because it was on Yom Kippur. Fortunately, the Dodgers won the series anyway. Slightly less well known is that Koufax's pitching had to overcome the fact that he had the tendency to tip pitches throughout his career. Willie Mays once said of him, I knew every pitch he was gonna throw and I still couldn't hit him. He was something special. Oh, every Jewish kid's here. And I'll tell you something, I've not gone to Yom Kippur services in order to just stay home and wallow in self-pity. This guy missed the World Series for it. Also, if you're looking at other top 10 lists of greatest pitchers of all time, he's on that list too. So, yeah. you know, not just top 10 Jewish lists, he's on top 10 top, baseball lists. Top 10 
normal people yeah, list. Yeah, just straight just up straight top up, 10 list is yeah, on it. Yeah, he's really actually, he's actually yeah, really good. He's actually really the good. This guy's are, okay, but this guy, this guy could pitch, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, he could throw a fastball faster than uh, than a, a Jew at a deli. A Jew at a deli. <laughs> yeah. Eating a matzo ball on a, on a Friday soup. Eating boobies, boobies, Zadie's soup. <laughs> well, that does it for this list. We're gonna go head to the deli, get some matzo ball soup, some smoked meat sandwiches, get some egg creams, and discuss the starting lineup of profits. To me, I'm putting Ezekiel at leadoff and Isaiah. He's hitting clean. And remember to subscribe, tweet, follow us on Facebook and Instagram for the ninth on CBC Gem. Catch, Catch it. it. And get a good smoked meat sandwich while you're at it. Catch it. Catch it. <laughs>